we go. World Championship Seniors Division Finals. Let's get into this action. Uh, look at that. Arceus versus Lugia, preferred starters for both players. All right, let's talk about strategies for both of these players. The Arceus Giratina deck, relatively straightforward strategy. Just trying to attack with Arceus V-Star, use that Trinity Nova, get a bunch of energy cards into play, and disrupt your opponent with Path to the Peak and Judge. You're trying to knock your opponent off of their game. Arceus V-Star just has a very straightforward, consistent attack, doesn't do anything really flashy, but with the disruption from Path to the Peak and Judge, if you can make your opponent stumble a little bit, the constant pressure from Trinity Nova backed up by Giratina V-Star can be enough to close out games. And on Gabrielle's side, it will really come down to that Summoning Star V-Star power. If you can get Archeops out in this matchup, you can hit hard, you sort of have a better chance. You can trade in pretty favorably with things like the Snorlax. You've got that one hit potential with Slacking V and the Weirdeer as well. First deck search will be done for Sydney. Playing Nest Ball, you see all those Pokemon coming to the top of the deck, making sure they're all available. We know that they are, but Sydney's just gonna double check and I think I even saw a double turbo energy in that hand. So, I mean, there's a very different strategies. Luke is trying to get all these Archeops in the discard pile, go for all this, but as the Arceus player, all you really need is just the energy attachment, getting some of these Arceus V down, basic Pokemon down, and that's all you need on turn one. And we do see B Doof returning to the final stage here at the World Championships just one year ago. Was in the Masters Division winning deck and back once again. Uh, this time around, coming with an ability that Carefree Countenance that doesn't do a whole lot in this particular matchup. But uh, that Industrious Incisors from the Barrel is very important as the game progresses. Allows you to constantly play cards like Judge to disrupt your opponent, but then you'll have that V Barrel to draw back up to five cards and not be affected as badly. Action on Gabriel's side. We'll play Nest Ball first to search out the deck. We see a lot more of these energy cards. Of course, not playing the single strike package, so no, no earn or vitality. Both players actually playing Slacking V. Don't think I could have <laughs> predicted to see uh, Slacking V as a mirror matchup in this Seniors Division Finals, but that's the way Pokemon works out sometimes. I think just Gabriel's playing the Slacking V in this one. Oh, just the God. Arceus Giratina oh, yeah, yeah. on Sydney's side. Um, but yeah, we will talk about some of these kind of interesting choices in this colorless Lugia deck. We have seen a lot of single strike Lugia, you know, using the Tyranitar V, sometimes the single strike Urshifu V, Stonejourner, Eveltal, those kinds of cards. Nope, this is all colorless. All of the energy cards in this deck are special energy cards, as is usual for a Lugia deck, but... They all only provide colorless energy. Your only attackers are colorless Pokemon. You have things like the Slacking V, Weirdeer V, and Snorlax as your main attackers, along with, of course, uh, the Lugia V-Star. But excellent start here from Gabriel is going to go ahead and put the two Archeops into the discard pile with that Professor Burnett. It's really all you can ask for. Uh, maybe we'll see a, a Read the Wind or something like that. And a great time to do it on turn one. This is before something like Spiritomb comes down into play to make it so Luminion can't be used, or Path to the Peak as well, making it even more difficult. And that's all you really need. No energy oh. attachment, though. So it will just be a pass back over. And oh no, there's not a lot going on in this hand. Lots of clunky, unplayable cards. Things like Fihon, Energy. I think there might be a B Barrel, though. Yep. Is this just going to have to be a B Barrel for one? I don't think there's any other oh, way. No. I mean, you could play Boss's Orders, but. Oh no. Are you, I think you might have to play the boss here just to try and give yourself one more card to find Ultra Ball. Or, of course, the Arceus V-Star itself. Sydney already faced with a very difficult decision. It is going to go after the Luminion V, and off of this needs to draw an Ultra Ball or an Arceus V-Star. No! no! Wow, two more supporter cards. No way to get this Arceus out, and uh -oh. your opponent just had an insane start. Burnett discarding both Archeops. There's no even path to the peak. It's just going to be a power edge for 110 mm. damage. Tempo immediately in Gabrielle's side of the court. This is not how this deck is supposed to work. It's supposed to be very consistent. And there we see the Lugia V-Star. Two Lugia. Summoning star. And uh-oh, Sydney is in a lot of trouble. Immediately putting those two Pokemon into play. Summoning star, summoning out Archeops onto the grandest stage. Primal Turbo, the ability that makes this deck run, allowing you to search your deck for two special energy cards, and 
put them onto your board. So with the way the math works out, if Gabrielle can find a way to retreat this Luminion and put four special energy onto this Lugia V-Star that are not double turbo energy, then it will be able to attack for 220 damage with Tempest Dive and take the knockout. And as long as there's an energy in hand, this is very much possible. 220 damage online, both Primal Turbos being used. And this is how powerful this deck is. Lugia V-Star immediately powered up, ready to deal 220 damage. We'll see what else Gabriel has. Did not attach an energy on the first turn, but there it is, the retreat into Lugia V-Star. And we might be seeing a pretty quick first game here in the finals. Down goes Arceus V-Star. Gabriel takes the first two prize cards, and Sydney is on the back foot immediately. And no pressure attacking whatsoever. Arceus V, the only attacking Pokemon. The barrel can draw cards, but there's nothing else it could do. Sydney left with absolutely nothing in play. How do you even come back from a situation like this? I don't know that you do. This Arceus Giratina deck is all about a very linear game plan. You need to get Arceus V Star out, start using Trinity Nova. When you're in this situation, all you can do is play down another Pokemon V. You have to wait a turn to evolve it into the V-Star, and you're just going to be so far behind. I don't know how you can possibly make up this deficit. It does find Arceus, but there's no energy cards in his hand, so that's also a piece missing to even have a chance. Yep. You've got to threaten a Trinity Nova at least on the following turn. Heck, Sydney going to battle back, though. Try to figure out some way to come back in this first game. Now, one of the important cards in this matchup on Gabrielle's side is also the V-Guard energy. Now, all of the attackers in Sydney's deck are Pokemon V, and this special energy card reduces the damage taken by 30 from your opponent's Pokemon V. It makes it so Giratina V-Star's lost impact does not get a one-hit knockout on Lugia V-Star. Every little thing like this that makes it more difficult for your opponent to get a knockout is extremely important. Was there an energy card off that industrious incisors? Nope. I don't think so. Wow. No energy card found. So unless there's something like a Raihan next turn, there's going to be no way for this Arceus V or V-Star to deal any damage, even more advantage here for Gabriel in game number one. Yeah, if Gabriel finds a boss's orders this turn, I think it's all but over. It has Luminion V in hand. There's no path to the uh -oh. peak. First going to use Primal Turbo. Just make sure there is a boss's orders. We did see that uh, one of the boss's orders was in the prize card, so that is unavailable. And I see it there, that beautiful full art boss's orders from the Paldea Evolved expansion. Seems like it's got to be what you do. Go after this Arceus V, take another two prize cards, and you've got so much tempo, so much energy on board, and threatened so much in the following turns, and your opponent has still done no damage and taken zero prize cards. Yep, and every turn you get to use both of those Primal Turbo abilities, search your deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to your Pokemon. And there we do see the boss's orders, Lysander coming out, I believe, We'll probably go after the Giratina V in this situation, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're taking a two-prize knockout here, you're getting one step closer to victory. Both Lugia V-Star powered up. Boss's Orders found off the Luminous Sign oh, ability boss. from Luminion. Boss's Orders will bring up the Giratina. Smart choice is the thing that can deal the most damage to you in this board. And there it is. Boom. Giratina goes down. Tempest Dive. Two more prizes. Gabrielle in a commanding lead so far. All right, this is the turn for Sydney to finally do something. Arceus V-Star in hand, or at least an Ultra Ball for it, and can use that Star Birth ability once per game. You can use this. Search your deck for any two cards and put them into your hand. Uh, the question is, uh, we should have a basic energy card in the discard pile. Mm -hmm. Yep, so if you want to attack this turn, gonna have to go for the right hand and you won't be able to play a disruptive supporter card like Judge or Iono. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to attack. You can't play both Raihan and a disruptive supporter card in this turn, so Gabriel's hand is gonna go unchecked once again. Can thin the hand out, search the deck for another V Pokemon, V Star Pokemon, and we'll just try to put some of these V Star Pokemon in play, make it a little harder. The way the game works out right now, Gabriel can't necessarily put a powerful Pokemon into play right now yep. since 
the bench is full, and Lugia V-Star does cap out now that powerful energy is rotated at 220 damage with that Tempest Dive. An interesting tech card coming down there, that Radiant Alakazam. Able to use that Painful Spoon's ability, move two damage counters around, and that could actually be pretty relevant. There is some damage on that Luminion. You are going to be dealing damage to these Lugia V-Star if you're not taking one-hit knockouts. Maybe if this game gets to that point, you can set up a way so that a Trinity Nova or a Lost Impact can take some knockouts as Starbirth will be used. So didn't look like there was any Raihan off of the Industrious Incisors. So what will be the choice here off these two selected cards from the deck? Yeah, obviously you need a, a double turbo to uh, attack with Arceus V-Star this turn. Um, I mean, it's kind of funny. You can get Raihan, which gets any card. So it's almost like you're searching for any three cards this turn. Uh, there's a path to the peak in hand already. This is a situation where you might be trying to figure out, okay, I have what I need for this turn. What can I put into my hand for the following turn that's going to be useful? Maybe prepare by putting an Iono in your hand and try to, you know, play Path to the Peak, disrupt your opponent, put them down to two cards in hand, and maybe, just maybe, this is what you need to start making a comeback. Raihan, the supporter of choice for the turn, accelerating the Psychic Energy from the discard pile to Arceus V-Star, and grabbing double turbo energy, Arceus V-Star. Better late than never, but it is finally online. Trinity Nova, 150 damage because of the V-Guard energy, so still is getting a two-hit knockout. At this point, Kyle, it's still the question. Is it too late? Is there a reasonable way that Sydney can take six prize cards before Gabriella is able to just take these final two? I mean, the damage is guaranteed into this active. Sydney's not playing any way to pick Pokemon up with something like Sharon's Care. So as long as there's one more boss's orders, the game will end at some point. Yep, the Painful Spoons from Radiant Alakazam going to be used to move two damage counters from Luminion V over to that Lugia V on the bench. Uh, the V-Guard energy doesn't really mess with the math on Trinity Nova. Still going to be a two-hit knockout either way. So uh, I actually don't think those two damage counters will be particularly relevant, but they're also not doing much on the Lumineon, so I guess may as well move them somewhere. Fair enough. Move some damage counters around, spread things out. So there it is. Trinity Nova finally putting this into play, getting some more Pokemon powered up. And they did see Gabriel drew boss's orders off the prize cards. Now that oh. won't be able to close the game out now, but maybe you just deal some damage into this active Arceus V-Star. Put the pressure on your opponent and uh, even sort of some mind games here. Make a bluff, show that your hand is maybe dead, that you don't have anything going on, and your opponent may not be very inclined to disrupt it if you're not doing anything in the first place. We will still see Capturing Roma played, so can maybe search out some of these Pokemon. Of course, none can be benched, none can be evolved but it is still a good way to thin those cards out so that you don't draw into those in case your opponent plays something like an Iono to disrupt your hand. Yeah, this is a tricky spot. Um, obviously, Gabriel is very far ahead in this game, and when you're in that kind of a situation, you just want to figure out, how could I possibly lose this game? What is the best way for me to maximize my position and make sure that my opponent is unable to make some kind of crazy comeback? Um, so Gabriel going to go ahead and um, Primal Turbo once again, get extra energy into play. I think maybe prepping for that Weird Deer V to come out in the late game and come in for one final blow. Uh, but it is a little bit tricky because no bench spots available at the moment. Um, it will be a weird situation where he's unable to get a knockout here and unable to really prep another attacker. So is a little bit susceptible to you know, path to the peak plus hand disruption. Uh, it's not guaranteed that this game is over quite yet. It's still looking very likely that Gabriel will win, but it's not over yet. You see that choice belt come down, a card we haven't really seen in Lugia since the D block. Able to let the Pokemon deal 30 more damage to those V Pokemon, which is great. This is the exact matchup you're going for. And Already having boss's orders, the game plan's very clear here. Attack this Arceus, deal 220 damage, and then next turn, boss's orders can bring it up. And this is essentially Sydney's turn to do something. How do you give yourself momentum? There's a few good cards in the hand, Path the Peak Plus. 
uh, Iono. I mean, Path is not really doing much, though, at this point, as both V Pokemon, I guess it does shut off something like the Weirdier V from using yep. that Frontier Road ability, but that's really the only usage it has at this point. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. Uh, one of the unfortunate things for Sydney is that there is the Gift Energy on Gabrielle's active Lugia V-Star. Uh, so when it is knocked out, Gabriel will be able to draw until he has seven cards in hand, almost nullifying the hand disruption from this. I know would otherwise be an extremely disruptive card, but you have this safeguard with the gift energy, uh, just taking advantage of all these different special energy cards, these little minor effects, they add up to solidify your position. What else can you do here for your Sydney? Now, it seems fairly straightforward. You're going to want to attack with this other Arceus V-Star. Don't put this Arceus <laughs> V-Star that has the damage on it in play, but maybe setting up a second Giratina somewhere in Sydney's future, and does have the Ultra Ball, so deciding to get rid of the Lost City and Judge. There's no real main purpose that Lost City has in this matchup besides, I guess, being a stadium counter, but it's not too relevant as we do see the second copy of Giratina V coming into play, threatening potentially a lost impact on the following turn, but I even have to wonder are there enough energy left? We, we do see an interesting thing in Sydney's list. There are no copies of things like V-Guard energy, so by having more basic energy in the deck, it may allow him in positions like this later on to find more of those energies, power up Pokemon, even this late into the game. Yep, we'll see an attachment onto the bench, and then Industrious Incisors for three cards. Just trying to do anything possible to prepare for the next few turns of this game. Now, for being honest, if Sydney's going to come back in this game, it would involve Gabriel drawing all of the worst cards in his deck for the rest of the game. It is technically possible for that to happen, but Gabriel is just so far ahead in this game. He has several turns of buffer here where he can even miss once or twice and still be in a position to win, but it's not over until he gets that final knockout. Looks like we're going to see Gift Energy be played. I think maybe reaching over to the right, players are sort of used to having decks on the right side of their hand. And uh, what do these five cards look like? Now, Boss's Orders was on the bottom, so there was no chance of that being drawn off of something like the yeah. Gift Energy. Sydney taking the first two prizes of this game, so finding a way to slowly uh, claw back. And, and that hand's not good. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, definitely not good at all. Does, of course, still have Lugia V. Those are some of the worst cards in his deck. Lots of searching cards. I'm thinking about the energy counts. If there's a oh. way to attack with Weirdier this oh. turn. If there's if there's still four special energy in the deck that are not, you know, double turbo, we could see the slacking V with a choice belt finish off this game. But there's a lot of energy that have well, there's three in the deck. Oh, might be one short of winning the game this term, the Slacking V. The double turbo, of course, reducing the damage by 20. So if you use that in heavy impact, you would only do 270 with the choice belt. So can't quite get the win yet. So close, but just not there. One piece fewer than needed to take Nest this ball. final knockout. So how does Gabriel adjust in this position? We'll still play the Nest Ball, so. Will actually the weird be deer. the weird deer V coming out into play. He does have a double turbo in the choice belt, so I mean, you need seven energy on paper, but things get a little bit more complicated when you're dealing with double turbo energy. So double turbo energy essentially acts as 50 damage, right? Since it, or 60 damage, because it acts yep. as two double energies here. So if you have four double turbo on, you're dealing 120. And then if you have an additional four energy cards, you're getting there essentially. So two double turbo and Four additional energy will be there, but I think the last piece that's missing is just that jet energy. Is there a world where you just bench this, put the choice belt on it, play Iono, and hope to find one of those copies? I think if, if, if that's there, plus the counter stadium, yeah. those are a big two cards to ask for. You need that to be <laughs> the exact two cards you right. find off this Iono. Yeah, you could also just start loading energy onto the Weirdeer V and hope your opponent doesn't play boss's orders or something like that, but... And Gabriel did somehow manage to find a lot of bad cards off of the gift energy, drawing all the way back up to seven cards. Iono. And just gonna Iono and go down to two cards. 
there is still a way to win this game. It is very much not there. And oh wow, was that the boss's orders found off the Iono to two? I Oh no, it's research yeah. still. A good card to work with next turn. Now, of course, there is the gift energy still on this active Luthia V Star. And Primal Turbo hasn't been used yet. So I think the question for Gabrielle is you're most likely just gonna have access to Primal Turbo next turn. So do you even put energy on this weird ear and take that option a bit away from you? Just essentially limiting resources. If your opponent's going to knock it out, if it, whether it has energies on it or not, it's going to happen. And Tempest Dive was used, but I don't think the stadium was discarded. Didn't discard the path to the peak. So that's going to stay in play. I wonder if it's just because Frontier Road is the only ability, since there's none other that yeah, Gabrielle that's, that's can use. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, I think I understand. With the Path to Peak in play, you can use Slacking V to ignore uh, the Slacking V's ability to maybe deal some more damage. That's possible, but is there even enough energy left to use the Slacking V effectively? As Sydney found a way to claw back into this game, there's two heavily damaged Pokemon V-Star, but they are not knocked out. If Sydney's able to find a Giratina V-Star this turn, can start using Lost Impact to take another two prize knockout. And then Gabrielle is going to have to win on the next turn. Did find Ultra Ball, Athlet, Industrious, and Scissors, so that can grab the Giratina V-Star out of the deck. Wow. There is also a Judge, but I mean, your opponent has two cards in hand. <laughs> they didn't play anything after, so it may very likely just be retreating into this. Getting these energies slowly off of the Arceus V. And with the way this works too, the Choice Belt means if and if there's a V-Guard energy, Lost Impact can still take the knockout. Now in this case, there is none, so it doesn't make a huge deal, but it is still there, adding more damage. Nothing will stand in the way of Giratina V and its plans to take down any Pokemon that stands in its way. I think if you're in Sydney's position here, you may try to find a boss's orders this turn. Then you don't have to attack into the Gift Energy for the knockout. So it looks like we'll just retreat um, and just has to knock out the Lugia V-Star. And once again, Gabrielle will be able to draw up to seven cards in hand and potentially find that game-winning boss's orders. There we go, lost impact. We are tied at two prize cards each, but now this is the turn. Gabriel needs to close out this game. And only has one copy of Boss's Orders yet. These are a big five cards off Gift Energy. Is it there? It is! Has the Boss's Orders. I think it's the final card in hand. And Gabriel's playing quickly. I think the piece is there. It is. That full art Boss's Orders. Primal Turbo can be used. Accelerating these Jet Energy and Double Turbos left in the deck. And Boss's Orders can close out the game and knocking out one of these bench Arceus, just for safe measure, throwing all the energy on the active and finding the final copy of Boss's uh. Orders, Gabriel Fernandez Ooh. clinching up game one. What a way to kick off our finals here in the <laughs> senior division. Uh, Ooh. That looked like Sydney was gonna make a comeback for the ages, but the gift energy indeed, providing that final gift to Gabriel, the Boss's Orders to close out that game, uh, those are, you know, kind of the scary games where you're ahead by so much and all of a sudden, you know, I can't win this turn. Uh-oh, I can't win this turn either. Am I about to blow a four prize card lead? But nope, at the last moment, finds the boss's orders to close out game number one. And you see, Lugia has that super strong aggression out the gate, but when it's unable to find those gusting cards, or in this case, when you use so many of them early on to push your aggression, if your opponent is able to slowly combat it, put themselves back in a position, you've only got the three boss to gust. If your opponent can keep putting energy to play with things like Trinity, though, but they can play this little dancing game around where they keep pivoting into Pokemon that they've taken damage with and attacked with, and slowly get into that position with the Garatina V-Star. But wow, so much to take in on this first game. An incredible start there from Gabriel, put on so much pressure. Tempest Dive after Tempest Dive. But it was, it was Sydney coming back in with a lot of late game aggression, plenty of energy cards to spare. And that Caratina V-Star could have been unchecked if Gabrielle did not find that boss's orders. Wow, I mean, that was a close game and Sydney had one of the worst starts possible. <laughs> I'm interested to see what's gonna happen in game number two. Hopefully we get an excellent match here in the finals of the World Championships. If that was any indication, we're in for a good series. Absolutely.
absolutely. So much to take in after that first game. I mean, it feels like both decks have their pretty streamlined strategies. For Luki, let's put energy to play, get attackers going. I'm, I mean, looking at the resource management, and I mean, Gabrielle's plan was pretty simple there. Had both Lugia in play, had to bench both those Luminions, so there was no option to bench things, but is there maybe a Pokemon you think if both players set up, that is maybe the MVP or key card for Gabrielle to deal with Arceus V-Star and Giratina V-Star? Uh, the slacking V can be really important. The issue is it needs four energy that are not double turbo energy plus the choice belt. If you're able to pull that off, it can get a one-hit knockout on Arceus V-Star and Giratina V-Star. So that may be a card to keep an eye on in this second game. Both players having starting Pokemon. We'll see the prize cards come out for game number two. See if there's anything interesting in there. You see a Pumpkaboo. Snorlax, Pumpkaboo, one of those Path to the Peak. Pumpkaboo is, of course, that Pumpkin Pit ability to discard stadium cards. Three! Like, oh my. What? That double bib barrel as well! Oh no. Are you kidding me? That's a full house, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Three judge, two bib barrel? But usually when you have a full house, it's a winning scenario, yeah. but it's a losing <laughs> one here for Sydney. Unbelievable. Okay, well. Let's kick things off in game number two. Sydney will be going first this time. There is an energy attachment, but there's nothing else in this hand. Boss's orders, choice belt, escape rope. Oh no. Well, at least there's an energy attachment. That's exact, so. And no, no path to the peak, no spirit tomb to block Luminion V. Two terrible starts in a row for Sydney. What does Gabrielle have? He does have professor's research, but I'm not sure there's any Archeops to away into this card pile. I think the choice here for Gabriel. Do you want to commit Snorlax to the bench? Uh, there's no information. The other one is prized. So for the time being, both Snorlax unavailable. This one going to this card pile along with one of those boss's orders. So important to keep track of these resources. Oh, Whoa. no. What is his hand? Five energy cards, Professor Burnett and boss. We're going to read the wind. And hopefully <laughs> something good blows your way. <laughs> All right, Maybe. here's a huge top deck. Do we find Arceus V-Star? Or a supporter card, Iono. I mean, I was going to say Judge, but three of those are unavailable. Uh, it's just a Giratina V. Is there anything else? I mean, you can oh. play the escape rope, at least put up something like this one prize but arrow. I feel like you've got to at least try to swing the prize trade somehow. But no, it's just going to give this Arceus V into the active spot. and. Yeah, if he knew both the barrel were, were prized, he would throw the Bidoof out there it. right away. Passing over, and the Professor Burnett found the Lugia V-Star oh off the Read the Wind. Gonna get a turn to Lugia V-Star again, and able to take a two prize knockout with this Tempest Dive. Here comes Lugia V-Star, the summoning star, putting the two Archeops onto the bench, Primal Turbo. Are we gonna see two games in a row, a Lugia V-Star taking down an Arceus V? even has jet energy in hand, so can push this bench Lugia V-Star up into the active, as well as powering up this second Lugia V in the active spot. Excellent start, textbook to the T for Gabriel, and again, a tough break for Sydney on his second turn of the game. It's all gonna come down to the next draw for Sydney. It's gotta be something. And here comes the Lugia V-Star. And back to the peak as well. There's no way for Sydney to counter the stadium cards at all. Plays the one lost city, I guess, but I mean, you've got to find just that one copy. Down goes Arceus V. Gabrielle again, two prizes right away. And the game comes down to this. I mean, what do you even promote here? If you promote the Beep Doof, you now have to find one more resource. It's going to take uh, the risk. Put the Garrett to V Star. That's no, another boss. Another boss's orders. Oh, no. So, I mean, at least for the time being, you can evolve this Garatina V yeah. into a V-Star, buy yourself some time, but... I mean, Boss's Orders doesn't even buy you any time. I mean, it's more so just evolving this. Boss is going to bring up the Archeops. It's going to be one more energy needed to discard, and, and that's it. The turn is passed back over. See, another Jet Energy in hand could simply play that or just, you know, attach and retreat. Is there a boss's orders? No, here comes the jet energy. Lugia now with five and in the boss's, boss's orders. orders again. Boss's orders bringing up Arceus V into the active spot, going the same way as game one. Four prize cards taken in three turns here for Gabrielle. 
Gabriel trying to get this over with and speed run his way to a world championship. This is a huge top deck. Will Cindy finally find something? We know there's three judge in the prize card, so there's- It's another Arceus. Oh no. What a crazy game two this has been. After such a tough start in game number one, you shuffle up, you're hoping to play a good game of Pokemon, and, and then this, and then this terrible way to play out game two of, in terms of draws, it's out of your control, but you can't have it happen here on the world stage in your last game of the tournament. It's gonna be another boss bringing up Archeops, and now the question is, does Gabrielle potentially have access to one more piece? Looking there is up. the boss's orders, and Hold on, is there the pieces available? Is there a Pumpkin Pit? Oh. Pumpkin Pit can discard the stadium. There's a Luminion V that can search out boss's orders. Bring up the Arceus V. Gabriel Fernandez is your seniors division. World champion here in Yokohama, Japan. Congratulations, Gabriel Fernandez, you are a world champion. Incredible to see the emotions, the sparks in the background. And that was such a crazy finals. Definitely not a back and forth game, but still one filled with excitement, energy, draws, everything we love, and great sportsmanship between both of our competitors, the love for the game, the love for competition. Your new world champion, Gabriel Fernandez from Latin America. Incredible. That's how you draw it up. Turn to Lugia V-Star, get the two Archeops in play, sword of victory. Fly high, man. Fly high. <laughs> Lugia flew high today. It will be your senior division world champion deck. And congratulations as well to Sydney. Fought valiantly throughout this tournament. For your first top eight, a second place at the world championships. Nothing to scoff at at all. Yeah, I think uh, you can... <laughs> Pretty confidently say as well, nothing you could do in that situation. Just terrible starts. Things